in this presentation, I will be looking at the new specimen paper from CXC. This specimen paper is actually 2019 and it becomes effective for the exams for 2022. So it is a specimen paper that you would have found accompanying the new human and social biology syllabus. The syllabus that has been revised and the syllabus that the students who are doing the human and social bio SBA will be using. Now for those persons who are going to be doing the exams for the first time and you might not have seen a paper before, the multiple choice paper appears to be something like the one we are seeing on the screen except that you are seeing that it is a specimen paper outside of being a specimen paper it would have had the date or the year of the exam there and the instructions are as follow usually the exam paper tells what you are supposed to do giving nice instruction or instruction that you can follow so we're going to be going through this paper so as to look at some answers that are provided by CXC from time to time as we have persons, different persons doing these papers and um, based on where their thoughts are that could have influenced the answers that are given. And every now and then we might make mistakes on these papers, but for this paper, I'm almost certain that the answers that are provided by CXC are indeed correct. So if you are going to be doing human and social biology in the year 2022 and beyond, then of course, this past paper or this specimen paper is going to be important for you to look at what is expected and of course, the answers that are expected for the questions. So we're going to start with the paper here and the first question reads, which part of the cell controls all activities that take place within the cell. Now, this one is going to be easy for a lot of persons. Uh, we're just going to be going with the answers, and the answer here is going to be yes, it's going to be A. A controls the activities of the cell. Now, when we look at number two, which of a following specialized cell is found in the gut? Now, the gut is a part of what we refer to as the alimentary canal. So, it's not going to be our white blood cell. And I think this is the muscle cell. Um, it appears to be that to me. Uh, the nerve cell here and ciliated cells. So, I'm thinking that this cell here, epithelial cell, uh, it's going to be the answer and this is the answer from CXC. I'm not providing any answer here. I'm not even thinking much. I am pretty much going through the paper uh, looking at the questions and providing the answers that were given by CXC. You can refute them or you could just leave in the discussion what you think. Item 3 refers to the following food web which shows the feeding relationship for animals in a forest. And we have an anteater, seeming the apex predator there. We have ladybird beetle, we have a caterpillar, we have termite, we have mealybug, we have hibiscus leaf, and we have leaf litter. So pretty much looking at this food where we could easily say that it is edophics, it has to do with the soil. Now, which of the following outcomes will occur if a mealybug become extinct? Now, the hibiscus leaf will decrease, the anteater ant eat, ant population will die out, the ladybird beetle population will die out, the caterpillar population will increase. So for three, your answer is going to be the ladybird beetle population will die out. So that will happen if the mealybug were supposed to become extinct. And I want to point out here that C is the answer because we are looking only at the food web that is on the screen and not what is happening uh, pretty much in the environment. So if you look at what is on the screen, the 
mealy bug. The mealy bug um, is fed on or preyed on by the ladybird beetle. It's the only thing that the ladybird beetle has to eat. So, of course, if this were supposed to be removed, as it were for this food web, the ladybird beetle would have actually become, would have died out. So, see our answer there. So, we move on to question number four. Item 4 refers to the following diagram which shows a process that occurs in the human body. So something here is moving from low concentration to high concentration and I assume that this is a net movement. The process illustrated in the diagram above uh, referred to as what it is. So we are looking at question number 4. What is your answer for question number 4? Of course, moving from low concentration to high concentration against the concentration gradient, that is definitely going to be active transport. It's moving against the concentration gradient. And if you understand the content, well, you'll remember that it is using energy from the cell. Item 5 refers to the following diagram, which shows the, not to show what that is, as involved in testing the for the presence of starch in a leaf so let us look testing the uh, leaf for starch the solution x now if we're testing for starch then immediately we know that that should have been iodine so the solution x is dropped on the leaf as assuming photosynthesis has occurred the leaf will become all right so popularly or commonly we would have said blue black but here, 5, our answer is going to be B. We're going to be using black. I'm not too sure why I've been seeing this black thing, but we have been teaching the students blue-black. But if you're seeing blue-black or black, still accept it to be the color of the positive color for starch. All right, so please be reminded that you need to do some of these labs. I know that there are some schools or some teachers who are saying, we don't need to do these labs, but you need to do them. They are on your paper. Which of the following mineral plays an important role in the nucleus of the cell and is necessary for the formation of bone and teeth? So we're looking at bone and teeth. Is it iron? Is it iodine? Is it calcium? Or is it phosphorus? Now, what we find is that we have become so accustomed to calcium, but our answer here is going to be phosphorus please pay attention not only to the bone but the role in the nucleus of the cell so of course these are going to be our answer for question number six which of the following vitamin is classified as water soluble well water soluble and fat soluble is that how we classify vitamin vitamins and your water soluble vitamins are going to be a uh, b and C, while the others are going to be A, D, E, K, fat soluble. So C is our answer for seven. We move on down to question number eight, and I'm moving pretty slow to facilitate you. The best reason for including water in the diet is that it dissolves nutrients during digestion, is necessary to prevent the development of scurvy, is the medium in which certain minerals are stored uh, stops hunger from returning too early after a meal is eaten. Uh, you would have heard that when you are in the country, probably a rural area, persons really can't afford it. So you go and drink some water and you'll be fine. Our answer here, however, is going to be A for question number eight. Dissolve nutrients during digestion. And it comes nicely with that water soluble. Alright, which of the following mineral which of the following measures can be used to categorize obesity? Is it height? Is it weight? Is it blood pressure? Or is it BMI? Body mass index is going to be for question number nine. We usually use a body mass index, a mass versus the height. And that can tell us whether or not a person is obese. I'll move on to 10. Which of the following teeth 
present in children and adults is responsible for grinding food into smaller pieces. Remember, we see this in both adult and children. So if it's adult and children, it's not the molar. It's going to be your premolar. So these are going to be your answer there. We want to pay attention to that. I know that the popular answer here probably would have been molar. But the correct answer is going to be premolar. Which row in the following table correctly matches the enzyme with its site of production? So the enzyme, where is this enzyme produced? So we are looking at A, B, C, D, but our answer here is of course going to be uh, C, pepsin and renin associated with the stomach. So for 11 there, it's going to be C. So we move on down to 12, the question that most students hate, graphs. Students just don't do graphs. Item 12 refers to the following graph, which show how the rate of reaction varies with temperature for a certain enzyme. So if we look at the enzyme here, we're seeing rate of reaction on the y-axis and temperature on the x-axis. So temperature here being the independent variable. Which of the following conclusion can be deduced from the graph? above now this requires some ai skill so your answer here is going to be c the rate of reaction is slower at lower temperature now the rate of reaction is slower at lower temperature which one can be deduced 12 c all right so the rate of reaction is slower here at lower temperature but as the temperature increases you will realize that the rate of reaction also increases right. we move on to 13 and this is the digestive system item 13 refers to the following diagram which shows the organs of the digestive system okay here which of the labeled organs above is the Pancreas. The pancreas usually looks like a leaf. Uh, a lot of persons like an East Indian mango leaf. So our answer here, of course, is going to be pancreas. Something is wrong here. 13. Oh, B. 13. Our answer here is going to be B. All right, awesome. And our answer above. Let me just check. C. All right, 13, 14. Yes. A villus is best able to perform its function because it has. So we're looking at 14. And our answer here is going to be D, several projection. I would call them microvilli. Some might say a, a finger like projection are present on its surface and this increases the surface area so our answer here this is a little nice one is going to be d for 14 and for 15 in which of a fallen organ does chemical digestion occur um, in the mouth you have mechanical digestion and some amount of chemical digestion of starch so the best answer here is going to be in the small intestine we have all the enzymes here rolling out Yes, something happens in the mouth, but the bulk of it there happening in the small intestine. All right. Yes, some persons might argue about the stomach with um, the pepsin and the renin, but C is going to be the most suitable answer here. Which of the organ does chemical digestion occurs only? So in the muscle, you have churning. Now, in the exam, make sure you underline words like these. So you don't miss them, all right? So we move on to 16. Which of a following factor may not, and we look at the not, we want to underline this word, affect the breathing rate of an individual. So pay attention to not. So we're looking at 16. Um, your height will not. Drugs will affect it, your weight will affect it, and altitude, high. You remember the Azteca? Uh, they always want to play football there to have an advantage over their opponent. So height there is going to be your answer. 
17 to 18, we're looking at this graph which refers to what's happening here, which shows the relationship between the average age of death and the number of cigarettes smoked per day. So let us look at this one and see what's happening here. We are looking at question 17. So question 17, it says, uh, if an individual died at 70 year old, how many cigarettes did he, she smoke? All right, so let us look at 70. So 70 is going to be somewhere here. So you want to use your protractor, or you set square something there, look at where it intercepts there, and then we want to come on down straight down here with your ruler. Now, num uh, cigarette smoke per day, so that would have been five. So for 17, our answer is going to be five. All right, so that's how we get using the ruler here to look where the intercept here and that provides the answer what about 18 at what average age did non-smoker die persons who were not smoking at what age did they die all right let's look at that persons who are not smoking at what uh, i want you to pay attention to this word average age all right so non-smoker would have been a zero here all right so on this thing here the average age would come in somewhere about there because you're seeing it now on the same zero so our answer for 18 it would have been about 74.5 you can attest to that look at it 75 74 so 74 halfway between so this is going to be a non-smoker all right so you just have to read from the graph there and you should be fine all right we'll move on to 19 which refers to the following diagram which shows the structure of a human respiratory system and in which of the labeled structure above does gaseous exchange take place a gaseous exchange is going to take place in the alveoli so for 19 uh, you want to help me here what is going to be the answer all right so it's definitely going to be this one here so it's going to be B for 19. then we move on to 20 which chamber of the heart has the thickest wall all right that one is easy it's going to be the left ventricle Get help with CSET Biology SBA Labs and Human and Social Biology SBA Labs at tcp-academy.com Tim had questions. He wanted to know where he could get help with his SBA Labs. His parents searched but could not find that experience. Tim also made some calls however could not find the help he needed. Tim needed an experience he could trust to help him get over the hurdle of SBAs as success was in sight. He met the guides from tcp-academy.teachable.com and they designed a program to help him. tcp-academy.teachable.com was able to help him. So too, they can help you. Sign up tcp-academy.teachable.com for help with your SBAs in biology and human and social biology. So for 20, it is going to be C. Remember, you must pay attention. You must use whether it be left or right, whether it be ventral, ventricle or atrium. You have to make sure that you are doing some work with circulation. It's pretty much always on the exam, something from circulation. Now, systolic pressure is um, not to show what that is. Sorry, that's, that's what the software is returning. But our answer here is going to be D ice pressure when the heart contract so systolic pressure is defined i think they should be 
defined as the highest pressure when the heart contracts. So D there is our answer. Then we're going to be looking at 22. Lymph is described is lymph is different from tissue fluid because the lymph contain a higher concentration of amino acid and water. All right, so that makes lymph different than uh, tissue fluid because lymph contain a higher, uh, higher amount, or higher percentage, higher quantity of uh, amino acid and water. So B, there be no answer. Moving on to 23, and I do hope that you are following. Remember, you can use your textbook to follow and get these correct. Item 23 refers to the following diagram, which show four components of the blood. So the first part there, we have the phagocyte, then we have another what we call lymphocyte, and we have the platelets, and of course, the red blood cell. So we are expected now to find out which row in the following table correctly identify each component of the blood above and this is for 23 so a is going to be our answer here phagocyte lymphocyte platelets red blood cells so a is our answer here all right you need to share this video uh remember there are many other videos for both biology and human and social biology on my youtube channel cset biology tcp you can also visit our paid version that is at tcpacademy.teachable.com so for 24 your answer here is going to be the role of the uh, pacemaker is to it pretty much performs some control function so our answer here is going to be control heartbeats all right so 24 25 tendons are tissues which what tendons do they attach the end of muscles to bone so 25 is going to be d all right and i'm not looking at the distractor too much uh 26 which row in the following table describes the action of antagonistic muscle when not too sure what that is the lower arm our answer here though is going to be i'll tell you what it is it's going to be c contract and relax so it wants to find out which row in the table describe the action of antagonistic muscle when i know acting in the lower arm all right so contracting you're going to find that when you flex the arm the bicep will contract and the tricep relax and vice versa so here is our answer there for 27 at which type of joint are bones separated by cartilage pads and allow slight movement i think this particular question is somewhat new as it were with the adjustment or the amendments to the syllabus so our answer here is going to be a separated by cartilage pads and allow for slight movement so that's going to be that which we refer to as fixed joints all right so this is another thing on the syllabus it appears just like this uh inch joint synovial and the ball and socket joint uh not too sure i think that these two are synovial joints i'm not too sure why we have synovial again i'm not too sure you can tell me in the chat why why is this a new syllabus like that with the synovial between the inch and ball and socket joint so it appears in the syllabus. Item 28 refers to the following diagram of a skeleton. Now let's look at this. All right, so this one for me is, I, I think it's sort of, I, uh, something that we need to get students to understand. The ulna and the radius, the ulna is to the pinky finger and the radius is to the thumb. As the fibia, uh, fibula is a fine bone as the ulna is a large bone. So the F for fine and the ulna is the there so our answer here for 28 is going to be oh, sorry <laughs> sorry the ulna and the radius is to the hand as the fibia and tibia or fibula and tibia is to the leg so the f 
which is the fibula, is a fine bone, while the tibia is a large bone. All right, sorry about that. All right, 28, our answer is going to be tibia. It's a tibia and the fibula that we are going to be finding in the leg, and we're going to find the ulna and the radius in the hand. All right, and like I said, the, ul the ulna is to the pinky finger, while the radius is to the thumb. All right, the ulna would have had the humerus sitting in it at one end, that's the end at the elbow. Item 2930 refers to the following diagram, which shows the internal structure of the skin. So we are at excretion now, just completed the skeletal system, and we are at excretion. So our answer here, our question, um, in answering item 29-30, each option may be used one more than once and not at all. You want to underline these when you get to the exam. May be used once, more than once, or not at all. You want to make sure you have that. So which of the structure above secretes sweat? So that is going to be a sweat gland. Through the sweat pores there, so our coming through the pores, it's going to be the sweat gland. Uh, a there for 29, and then for 30, which of the structure above is stimulated when a person feels cold? So, your erector muscle is going to close, close this area here and cause the air to pretty much become erect, trapping the air to insulate the skin. So D there being the answer for 30. So that's 30. And this one here is 29. All right. So moving on down. Item 31 refers to the following graph, which shows the level of glucose in the blood of an individual at various times throughout the day. All right. Which of the following activity is most likely occurring during phase three? So you always want to identify phase three. All right. So for 31, your answer is going to be uh, a meal rich in carbohydrate was just consumed. All right. So what is happening at 31? Uh, sleeping, fasting, vigorous exercise. Uh, blood glucose, a meal rich in carbohydrate was just consumed. So you find that the blood sugar level would have increased here, having some insulin. So this is going to be the answer. All right. Just trying to explain what the answers are from CXC. These are not my answers. They are from CXC. All right. Which of the following activity would cause the body to release antidiuretic hormone? So, exercise, sweating, yes, ADH, antidiuretic hormone, so exercise and sweating would cause that to happen. 33, which of the following type of, I think is not too sure, I get it from the answer, the pupil dil dilation. So, looking at 33 there, so our answer there is going to be Cranial. Oh, so it's reflex. Which of the following type of reflex is pupil dilation? So it's a cranial reflex, all right, for the pupil. So this should have been reflex here. Moving on down to 34. Which of the following describes the functions of sense organ? All right, this one tends to be a little rocking on a lot of person's brain, and depending on how you, you practice and how the nerves work, you have to sort of pretty much look at one, two, three, and then after you solve that, you have to go down and solve for A, B, C, D. And this tends to give a lot of students trouble. The answer here is going to be C. Why C? Which of the following describes the function of sense organ? Uh, Warn of danger, sense organ, detection of stimulus, this is change in the environment, inform about the environment. 
So if you detect stimulus, then they inform you about the environment, but warn about danger. I think everybody will be asking why not that because you hear and it tells you that something is going on, but uh, sense organs. And so as a function, uh, you just feel something that it is hot, so it warms at about danger. So for this one, uh, somebody can tell me why not D, but CXD is saying that it is C. All right, but you can tell me in the chat why not D. Uh, Linda is looking at a coconut tree. If she has normal vision, how would the image of a tree appear on her retina? Uh, usually it is upside down. So here it's going to be D for 35. Yes, I'm in agreement here. All right, 37. Michael has diabetes mellitus. Which of the following vision disorder is he at risk? 37 is going to be cataract. Cataract, not glaucoma, astigmatism, or shortsightedness, but with diabetes, you will develop cataract. So, 37 there, you get the answer. We'll move on to 38. Which of the following comparisons about sexual and asexual reproduction is true? Sexual and asexual reproduction. Which is true. All right, it so a sexual include the fusion of male and female gamete. A sexual does not involve a fusion of male and female gamete. That is so true. All right, and gametes here refers to sex cell, the sperm, and of course the egg. So that's going to be C for us. For thirty nine, item thirty nine refers to the following graph, which shows the level of estrogen produced during the menstrual cycle and we are now at reproduction all right which of the following process is most likely occurring at point x so ovulation ovulation is most at day 14 somewhere midway the cycle here um it's going to be ovulation 39 ovulation and we move on to question 40 which of the following structures is expelled from the vagina shortly after childbirth? This one's supposed to be easy for everybody. Uh, placenta is the answer here. And for 41, which of the following methods of birth control prevents ovulation and implantation? So for 41, it's going to be hormones all right so it stops you from ovulating and it does not allow implantation to take place so the hormone the injection the pill um that will cause that all right so for 42 georgia does not complete her course of antibody antibiotics because she is feeling better which of the following outcome is likely to occur as a result of her not finishing uh, our course of antibiotics. So it seems we're having a problem here. So for 42, it is going to be C, uh, resistant bacteria in her body are left to grow and multiply. So she'll end up with what we call antibiotic resistance. So the next time around, she might very well have some problem treating with those, treating with the ailment that she's suffering. Item 43 refers to the following uh, Punnett square for flower, having an F problem, flower color, red, uh, and red is dominant there, and white there being recessive, and we are seeing a Punnett square here. Usually, when we see these flower color, they are usually looking at dominance, uh, co -dominance incomplete dominance and co-dominance. All right, what is the genotypic ratio of a red flower to the white so genotype is usually the letters and phenotype is what you see so the genotypic ratio here is one to two to one 
So we have one here, and we have two, then we have one. So it's one to two to one. So our answer for 43 is going to be C. Right. And then we are going to look at 44. Item 44 refers to the following diagram, which shows a cell undergoing the process of mitosis. So they are pulling away that is going to be anaphase. Away, the A anaphase, IP mat C. So 4 is going to be B. So once you're seeing the away, remember anaphase. Remember we said that we have interphase that comes before mitosis. And then we have P. M A T I P and then we have C coming under. So we have prophase, metaphase, anaphase, telophase, and cytokinesis comes after. I have a video on my channel on mitosis, there are several videos there. You want to go on over and check them at CSEC Biology TCP. So our answer here is going to be away anaphase. We're moving on to question 50. We've been doing well so far. Question 45. We're moving on to question 45. So question 45, alternate genes for eye color are referred to as, it's going to be allele. Allele is the term referred, we use to refer to genes. And I have a video on my YouTube channel, CSET Biology TCP. And nicely uh, discuss chromosomes, genes, DNA, and allele. You want to check that bit out. 46. Let's look at 46. The human papilloma virus, HPV, a vaccine for young women may help prevent. Um, what does it help to prevent? Cervical cancer. And it is said that if it is administered before age 21, it is effective. So we want to make sure that we can recall that. Now, organisms that transmit disease causing microbes to other organisms are called, this should be another easy one, they are called vectors. So we're talking about mosquito with malaria. So for this one is going to be A48. Glucose is found in the urine of diabetics because our answer here, not enough glucose in the blood is converted to glycogen. So it's because for 48 C, not enough glucose is converted to glycogen. So you know that something is happening here with the pancreas and the islets are islet of Langeron, whichever one you pronounce it to be. We have this problem coming on here. So we move on to 49. Bacteria were grown on an agar plate until the plate was covered with the visible bacterial colonies for this containing equal amount of different antibiotics were then placed on the agar plate after two days clear area had formed around some of the disc as shown in the diagram below so you are seeing the clear area there and the anti colonies so let us see what we're required to do so we are required now to find out which of the following colonies we shall follow in conclusion about the experiment is correct. So what will it be? Oh, antibiotic W is more effective against the bacteria than antibiotic X. As we have a larger white area, so it's suggesting that it is, should I say, controlling or killing the bacteria. All right, so 49 there being B. And we move on now to a big number, 50. Infectious disease such as 
colds and influenza are most commonly spread by inhaling airborne pathogen and that is why they are suggesting that we wear a mask for covid because it is said that it is more likely to be spread by inhaling airborne pathogens so you want to stay in well ventilated areas 51 which of the following factor can, contributes most to the development of obesity so for 51 interesting question here c 51 it's going to be lifestyle how you eat or you exercise you have a sedentary lifestyle why how, how do you live so your lifestyle will definitely be the number one enemy that you're going to have in there now the correct sequence of the stages in the life cycle of a mosquito is egg larvae pupae adult so that's going to be 52 it's going to be a and then for 53, Mala is vaccinated against a disease and her antibody concentration increases rapidly. However, over the next few days, there is a gradual decrease in her antibody concentration. What type of immunity does Mala what type of immunity so it is going to be active artificial I have a video on immunity you want to go and check that out it nicely covers all you need to know about immunity we're going to go on to 54 What is the correct order of a process involved in large-scale water purification? That, this was on the exam, I think, last time around. So our answer is going to be filtration, screening, sedimentation, and then chlorination. So 54 there is going to be B. And we're going to look at 55. What is the role of bacteria in sewage treatment? So the role there is to decompose organic matter. Remember we spoke about the decomposers being bacteria and fungi. So bacteria being there any at all is going to be for decomposition. A student used the apparatus below to test water for bacteria. Which row in the following table shows a correct label for X, Y, and Z? Now we are looking at 56. That is going to be, this is definitely a swab. And this is a petri dish for those persons who have gone to lab. And we have egg. I spoke about egg early on the paper. So we are using egg gel. So B is going to be our answer there for 56. So we move on to 57. Aaron lives down river from a farm. One year he noticed that algae are covering the surface of the water and fish are washing up dead on the shore. The most likely reason for fish for the fish died for the fish, so I think it's fish died is due to um, I think it's due to lack of oxygen because eutrophication is taking place. So of course I'm going to go of course C C A and I do agree with that. All right, fifty eight. Item fifty eight refers to the following table which shows the type of garbage generated on a weekly basis in the household of persons in a rural village so type of garbage the type of garbage here 
Whoa, 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 whoa. All right, great. So we want to know what would be the best method of domestic refuse disposal for the villagers to utilize to utilize to help reduce the amount of garbage sent to the landfill. So of course we are always going to go to the three R's or some persons might say four reduce recycle reuse and we could also refuse all right so we continue now looking at 59 so i've burned his household garbage every weekend which of the following is an effect of the smoke so an effect of the smoke here is going to be contributing to while warming all these make very nice question for your new sba for human and social biology and you can check my channel to look at the example that i would have had there for those persons who are still struggling with the sba you can get help by going to my channel and looking at that detailed example that i have provided for the students who are doing human and social biology which of the following components is common to both the biological filter method and the activated sludge method and this is of course sewage treatment our answer here is going to say stone covered with um aerobic bacteria so the answer there is going to be D. that brings us to the end of this paper i strongly encourage you to go study look at this paper Use it as one of those papers that you will, will provide a guide to the other multiple choice paper. Uh, based on the trend, we know that from time to time the questions are repeated. And of course, you should find a lot of these questions on the paper if you are doing human and social biology for 2022 and beyond. I am Mr. Wilson from CSET Biology TCP. Please be reminded to like, share, and of course, subscribe. You can also visit our paid channel at tcp-academy.teachable.com. Get help with CSET Biology SBA Labs and Human and Social Biology SBA Labs at tcp-academy.com. Tim had questions. He wanted to know where he could get help with his SBA Labs. His parents searched. But could not find that experience. Tim also made some calls, however, could not find the help he needed. Tim needed an experience he could trust to help him get over the hurdle of SBAs as success was in sight. He met the guides from tcp-academy.teachable.com and they designed a program to help him. TCP-academy.teachable.com was able to help him. So too, they can help you. Sign up tcp-academy.teachable.com for help with your SBAs in biology and human and social biology.